I went to a charismatic conference put on by Stand Firm World Ministries, Fresh Fire Ministries, and Streams Ministries. The featured speakers were Keith Miller, Todd Bentley, and Barbie Brethett. It was a three-day event hosted at one of the local churches in my city. My friends and I registered, paid the fee, and booked a hotel for the weekend. The registration fee was $35, but more if you paid at the door. It felt weird to have to pay to go to church like you would a concert or sporting event. I attended the conference with several people from the singles group at my vineyard church. Many other families from the vineyard also attended, but us singles carpooled and shared hotel rooms to help defer the cost. We were all excited about this conference and prayed that God would do great things while we were there. I went expecting a move of God. One of my friends commented, I hope he does the ring of fire. Ring of fire? Apparently, it's a thing where he makes a ring of fire in the air, and you walk through it, and supposedly this is some anointing or blessing or something. You walk through the ring of fire, and he prays for you, and you fall down. They said, it's awesome. It's a rush to get the spirit like that, but the way they talked about it made me feel a little apprehensive. I hadn't read anything about a ring of fire in the Bible. The first night it was jam-packed with everyone trying to get in. Because we had paid our fee in advance, we went to the pre-registration table. They required us to get purple wristbands that we had to wear for three days. We could not take them off, not even to shower, or we would not get back in. I am lucky my wrist is very small, and I could slip mine on and off easily. It would have been obnoxious to have to sleep or shower with that thing on. They did not want anyone who had not paid to get in. They had ushers or guards at the doors to the sanctuary to make sure you had your wristband. They would check your wrist after you went to use the bathroom, before they let you back in. I guess they were afraid of people getting the Holy Spirit or getting healed without paying first. Around the registration tables were tables piled full of things you can buy from the ministries, for outrageous prices, $25 for a CD or $30 for a book. They had sets to teach you how to have experiences like Todd Bentley, such as going up to the third heaven, or meeting angels. From Todd Bentley's ministry you could also buy hankies and get Todd to pray over them, and transfer the anointing to them, so your sick relative or friend might be healed, or if they were healthy, just get an explosion of an anointing of the Holy Spirit. This was based on people getting healed from the Apostle Paul's hankies in the book of Acts. I don't think Paul made people pay for hankies though. Streams Ministries had cards that excited everyone, because our church was involved with them, and was doing dream interpretation. They had laminated cards that you could buy for $10 to $25 that were cheat sheets on things like, what causes what illnesses, or, what numbers, colors, letters, and various animals mean in dreams. My friends bought the illnesses card and the dream card, and I looked at them on the way home. The illnesses card had things like obesity is caused by low self-esteem, and low back pain is caused by familiar spirits. It was a chart with the illnesses on the left, and the demons or spiritual conditions on the top, with X's to show you what caused what. Some problems were caused by multiple things. They also had other material for sale that showed you how to cast out whatever demons you had, so you could get well, or how to get better self-esteem, so you wouldn't be obese. The dreams card was your basic run-of-the-mill dream interpretation stuff, like the color red means danger, and purple means royalty. One thing I noticed is they interrupted the service a lot to advertise products at the pulpit. They would talk for a minute about a book or CD, then remind us that we could buy it in the foyer for a low low price. I did not see how this is doing anything but turning a house of prayer into a house of merchandise. They did this between speakers. They encouraged people during the breaks to go out and shop at the tables. In the sanctuary they had special areas roped off for the VIP section. Churches that were partners with the ministries or groups that had paid extra money, got to sit in these special areas up front. Everyone else that had just paid the regular price had to sit in the back. Sometimes we could not all sit together, because there wasn't enough room in one area, and we had not reserved a section for our group. Apparently, paying extra money for your group got your group mentioned up front, because the first day they said, and we've got guests from such and such church over here, and then that church would clap to show everyone where they were. 
They did not mention any groups that were not seated in the VIP sections. At the beginning of the conference, Keith Miller talked about how he felt there were going to be open heavens during this conference, and people were going to get new anointings and stuff like that. I don't remember much about Keith Miller, except that when he was invoking the Holy Spirit, he kept saying shh, shh into the microphone. Like, come down Holy Spirit, shh, shh, shh. The Holy Spirit's coming tonight, shh, shh. It was very weird, and I did not know that making hissing noises into the microphone like that, got the Holy Spirit to come down. It actually made me a little uncomfortable the way he was doing it. I had not experienced something like that before, so I did not pay much attention to it, but it did not seem like praying to me. He talked a lot about angels appearing to him and such, and how there were angels in the room. He talked a lot about mantles. How God was going to rip off a tiny piece of his robe, and float it on down to you to cover you, and you would get a new mantle that would give you some kind of power. That prophetic mantles, and healing mantles, would be given out today, straight from God. They tie this in with Elisha taking Elijah's mantle. Barbie Brethet from Streams Ministries also spoke. She talked about heavenly orbs that people would be seeing at conferences, and how they would capture them on camera how these heavenly orbs were God's glory and angels, and things like that. How they had pictures of one that when you look close, you would see a figure with her hands held out. That these orbs or angels were here to minister to us. They showed pictures on the projector of orbs at other conferences, some of the pictures had more orbs than others. The number of orbs was supposed to be in proportion to how much glory of God had come down. I was extremely skeptical about the whole orbs thing, because it just did not sound right to me. One of my friends caught orbs on her digital camera, but when we later showed them to our photographer friend who had been unable to come to the conference, she told us that those orbs were nothing but lens flare. While Barbie was talking, she interpreted some dreams from pastors. But she would only do it for pastors and not anyone else. The reason she gave for this was that they work hard, and we need to give something back. Strangely, all the pastor's dreams, while each one was very different, all seemed to mean that God would be blessing them by expanding their ministry, and bringing rich people to their church to help. One guy had some dream about diving into a well with a big fish, and she took this to mean a big fish businessman who would be able to finance ministries. When Todd Bentley finally spoke, I believe it was the second day, the atmosphere in the room changed dramatically. Finally. The guy we have been waiting for. You could feel the room get excited in anticipation. When he started out, he was really energetic. There wasn't any prayer beforehand. He was sweating within three minutes. Not that there is anything wrong with sweat, but you could see the perspiration on his brow from the back of the room. What was weird was that he said he was going to preach on a psalm, so we all opened our Bibles, but every time he tried to read the verse, he would begin to laugh, and stagger, and make weird noises. This made me extremely uncomfortable. It seemed as though he was mocking the scripture by laughing at it when he began to read it. But everyone admired him for this, saying he was so drunk in the spirit that he could not read his Bible. He would calm down, but as soon as he went over to the pulpit where his Bible was, he would immediately become so drunk that he could neither read nor preach, but just would stagger around laughing and snorting for a few minutes. Still acting rather drunk, he began to preach about all the great things he's done, with God's help, of course. About how he went from having no money to having a multi-million dollar ministry, and healings, and how great it all was. Everyone thought this was a fantastic testimony, but I wondered why God would have him set aside whatever he was going to preach on, to brag about his accomplishments. He laughed, snorted, and chortled through his entire speech. Whenever he would begin to mention a scripture, he would become incoherent. Why could he neither read nor recite the scriptures without breaking into a fit? But he was able to maintain enough composure to brag about all the great stuff God has done with him? People ate it up. But it was seriously disturbing to me. He talked a lot about how he would go to the third heaven, and how many times he has met angels. And how you too can get into a Holy Spirit-induced trance whenever you want, and go to heaven, and how he's got teachings on how to do it. 
Apparently, we can force the Holy Spirit to take us to heaven and have out-of-body experiences whenever we want. He related one tale of a witch doctor who had come to one of his conferences. That night God took him out of body, supposedly, and into the witch doctor's dreams and witnessed to him while he was dreaming. The witch doctor came back the next day, saved, because of being witnessed to while he was dreaming. He also talked about the time he says he got taken up into the third heaven. Angels were running around saying, the books of destiny, the books of destiny. They stuffed a page from one of those books, which had a map of this one African country, into his mouth. Three days later the ruler of that country called his ministry. Eventually he quit talking about his accomplishments and moved right into the awesome signs and wonders part of his talk. There was no sermon or teaching, just Todd saying how awesome he is, and now, I guess, proving it. He starts blowing people down in the spirit and such, and calling people out based on sicknesses. They would fall down and be healed. But mostly healed of stuff you can't see. Actually all stuff you can't see. One lady supposedly had chronic elbow pain, and she said it was gone after she had fallen down under the power. He had everyone who had a metabolism problem stand up, because he felt the Lord was going to reverse metabolisms. Everyone would be free from struggling with their weight if they would just stand up and get this blessing. Tons of people, who were fat, and those who thought they were overweight, stood up as he spoke words of healing over them. He prophesied over one lady, saying she was going to get the Esther anointing. Apparently in the prophetic world, women can only have one of two things, a Jezebel spirit or an Esther anointing. The Esther anointing means God gives you favor with people to get what you want, like when the king had favor with Esther. If you want to get promoted at a job, having the Esther anointing will give you favor with your employer, and you will get promoted. Things like that. So, he prophesied that this anointing would fall on her, and many good things would come her way because of it. Getting the Esther anointing is a sure way to get ahead in the world, apparently. He also called a boy who looked to be about eight years old, and had been helping collect offerings. He prophesied over him, that he would have many ministries, and bring many people to God. Then he threw a spirit into the boy, and the boy shook as if having a seizure, and then fell over. When the boy got up and went off the stage, Todd called the boy back up, and did it again, so the boy shook and fell down twice. Todd also prophesied over a very young girl, who was about six years old. Then he did the shake and fall thing with her too. But he made her come back two more times, for a total of three times. Each time the girl got up crying, and was on her way to her mother, but since Todd had called her back, someone would take her hand, and guide her back to Todd. When she finally reached her mother, she hugged her very tightly. I could not tell if she was crying because she was frightened or not. Todd eventually went through the aisles, blowing down aisles of people. When Todd Bentley took up offerings on top of the other offerings that were already taken, and the entrance fee, and whatever ridiculous amount of money they were profiting off their books and prayer hankies. He began to talk about how God had given him a word that somebody in the congregation was going to feel led by the Lord to write a check for $20,000, and God was going to bless them for that. He said, if you felt that that word was for you, and you are the one with $20,000 in the bank, you should get out your checkbook, because God is going to bless you by multiplying your offering 100 times. He was really intent on getting somebody out there to write a check for $20,000, because during this offering speech, he went back to it a few times. He talked about seed offerings a little too, saying that if you gave a seed offering, your checkbook would be bulging, because God was going to bless you, and you would be able to get a new house, and a new car, and whatever else you needed. Todd Bentley said the next night there would be a healing angel there, so pack in the sick people. I did not know how they planned to pack in the sick, because you had to have a wristband to get in. He also said that he had seen a giant angel straddling the church to protect us from evil spirits. He promised that he and Keith Miller would touch and bless every single person there, no matter how long it took. And, man, people were seriously anticipating that. They looked forward to it, hoping that God would give Todd Bentley a word just for them. Of course I wanted a word from God too. I prayed to God that if this was really of Him, He would knock me down and give me a word, so I would know that it was. 
But that if it was not, I did not want to fall down just because I was emotional, or because somebody had pushed me, or because I had felt I needed to fall. I have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, so my friends suggested that I pray for that, and pray for my prayer language of tongues. So I prayed that if the Holy Spirit was there, something would happen. I did not pray for tongues specifically, but just something from the Holy Spirit so I would know that it was Him. I was extremely uncomfortable with a lot of what was going on, but my friends kept saying it was because I was not used to it, and that I just needed to yield to the Holy Spirit and let Him move. So I prayed for most of the third day of the conference, and decided to not be so skeptical. At lunch break, one of my friends was so drunk in the spirit, we wondered if it was safe for him to drive. He drove, but we watched him in the rearview mirror, and he was definitely having jerky limb movements while driving. We were glad he did not get into an accident. Todd Bentley spoke about the kingly anointing. He took some obscure passage from the Old Testament and talked about how the kingly anointing allows us to hand out judgment and serve justice in the world by decreeing righteousness, and how, when we have it, we can proclaim things, and then justice will supernaturally happen. But if we don't decree it, then the injustice is allowed to stay. He said, if someone does something wrong, we must set forth a heavenly decree, saying, that isn't right. It's not right, and I will not tolerate it. Then something will happen to serve justice, because you put forth your decree of judgment under your kingly anointing. If somebody beats you up you can say, it isn't righteous, it's wrong, and I will not stand it any longer. Then watch them get run over by a car. Wham, bam, justice served. Okay, I exaggerate with the car running over people, but that was the main gist of it. People would get their just desserts. Then he led the congregation in prayer over their bellies, saying that water would come from our bellies and bring life. Next, he led a prayer for the kingly anointing to fall on everybody, so we could all go out decreeing righteousness. That preaching didn't last long, pretty soon it was all about the healing. Todd Bentley asked people to get out their cell phones and call a sick person, because he was going to speak the healing words through all these phones, and everyone would be healed all at once. That seemed weird to me, but I was game, because my mom was really sick at the time. But I found I could not call her because I had not brought my phone with me that night. This was odd because I had brought it the other two nights, in my purse, but had not put it in my purse that day. I had left it in the hotel room. After he spoke the healing words, my friend lent me her phone, after she had called her mom, who was also ill. But it was too late because he'd already spoken the healing words. I was devastated because my mom was super sick at the time. This was around the time of the surgery on her neck and being diagnosed with Lyme disease. People began to share testimonies over the phones of healings. But the people my friends called did not seem to get healed. Todd Bentley supposedly cast out a demon that was causing a woman chronic lower back pain. He said, if you have lower back pain, it is always a demon lodged in your sciatic nerve. This was supported by the illnesses card that was being sold by Streams Ministries that I mentioned earlier. She writhed on the floor, screaming for a few minutes, while he was casting out the demon. Then she hopped up, all happy and thrilled, saying her back pain was gone. It was seriously disturbing watching this woman writhe on the floor. I suppose that makes sense though, because if it was a demon, it is natural to be disturbed at it manifesting. But why would a born-again Christian woman have a demon possession problem with a demon being stuck in her sciatic nerve? At the end of the conference, we were supposed to move our chairs out of the way, and stand in line to get the anointing from Todd Bentley and Keith Miller. The prophets went in the back room to pray while everyone stacked their chairs along the walls. Then we all lined up in semicircles and waited for them to come back out. You were supposed to hold out your hands and wait for them to touch you. After they returned, they had men walk behind the lines to catch you so you would not hurt yourself as you fell. They were touching people's hands, and people would fall over. Lots of people were falling. They got to one guy, and he would go into a seizure-like state as he was falling, sort of crazy dancing and squealing. They thought this was great, and it made them laugh, so they had the catchers lift him back up. They would touch him again and laugh while he did this weird dancing or seizure thing as he fell backwards. 
They did that a few times. They did not spend a lot of time with most people, just touched them and moved on. I was praying during all this, that God would show me if it was of Him or not. I was a little frightened at the prospect of it not being of Him, and possibly opening myself up to the influence of evil spirits. So I was a little scared too, I did not want a bad spirit to make me fall over. I had considered opting out of being touched, but then I thought, what if it is of God, and I miss my chance to get a personal prophecy. When they finally got to me, Todd Bentley said fire of God as he touched my hands. But I felt nothing. Certainly not any fire. The other guy touched my hands as he passed by. I just had a very heavy feeling, and I began to cry. One of the prayer ladies who was following them, stopped by me, because she had seen that I had not fallen, and she put her hand on my forehead to pray for me. She did not seem to understand that I wasn't falling, because she kept praying for the Spirit to come over me, and pushed her hand harder on my forehead. Her pushing made me plant my feet even more firmly on the ground. She was not going to knock me over. She gave up when she realized I was not going to fall over, and was just going to keep crying, so she moved on. I was not the only one who did not fall over. I noticed that a few others also did not. I went and sat by the wall to pray, and was crying a lot, because I just felt horrible at this whole experience, wondering where God was in all of this. The prayer pastor from my vineyard came over to talk to me, but I didn't have much to say. I could not express what I was feeling about this whole event, and everyone just assumed that the Holy Spirit had touched me through the prophets and that was why I was crying. They did not know I was crying because God did not touch me through those prophets, and I did not know how to tell them that I didn't think that God was there. I felt uncomfortable about the whole conference, and it just reached a climax at that point, as I saw people shaking with seizure-like things, and laughing uncontrollably, and rolling around on the floor. I cried a lot because nobody seemed to really be praying to God. In fact, not a whole lot of prayer seemed to go on during this conference. Despite its length, there were only a few times when any of the speakers prayed. The only prayer was to call down the Holy Spirit, or ask for angels to heal or give anointings. They talked about the Holy Spirit a lot but not so much about Jesus or the Gospel. There was hardly any talk about sin or repentance, just anointings and mantles and prophecy. It was getting late and people were still lying around under the influence of a spirit or dancing around. Because they wanted to get home and close the church, they kicked everybody out. Some people had to be carried out. And that was the end of that. For my birthday my friends had bought me Todd Bentley's autobiography and his CD entitled Marinating. Listening to the CD disturbed my spirit. It seemed like trance-inducing music with Todd Bentley popping in occasionally to try and hypnotize you. His autobiography said some interesting things, but I cannot remember all of them. He talks a lot about all his supernatural experiences after being saved, some of them are really weird. I was very disappointed with the conference. I did not feel refreshed or renewed like everybody else said they were. I didn't fall under the power, or receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or anything that I had gone there expecting. I did feel like he showed me where not to look for him though, because I felt like the whole thing grieved God very much. I did not know what all made me feel horrible, but I know that my uncomfortableness was not just because it was unfamiliar to me. Many times during the services, it seemed like God was being mocked, though nobody took notice of it. I could not explain to everyone why I felt so disturbed, so I mostly said nothing.